Restaurant waiters often earn more from tips than they do from their hourly wages. This was definitely true for Armando Markage. Patsy's Pizzeria opened in 1933 and is one of New York City's iconic pizza restaurants. For decades, it has been serving famous New York thin crust style pizza. One of the restaurant's waiters, Armando Markage, had been working at Patsy's for nine years. The 27-year-old was working his way through medical school. As a student and employee, Markage prided himself on being a hard worker. However, one incident in May 2019 would test his patience. Before we start, can we get this video to 1,000 likes? Please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. May 4th was Saturday, the busiest day of the week for pizzerias. Like his co-workers, Markage was swarmed with plenty of customers. When a mother and her daughter walked in, he didn't think that anything was unusual. He sat them down and gave the menus. Markage noticed that the two women were staring at the wall. The restaurant's walls are decorated with portraits of famous figures and patrons, past and present. It is not unusual for customers to explore the wall. When Markage approached the two women, they ordered two slices of New York-style pizza. The three began talking for a bit, and eventually, the mother asked an odd question. Why weren't there more women on the wall? Markage did not know how to answer that. Some of these portraits had been up for 90 years, and it wasn't like he had decorated the walls. He answered that there were women on the walls, just not where they were sitting. The mother-daughter duo did not seem satisfied with Markage's answer. When Markage said that there were some women on the wall, the mother answered, not as much as there should be. Markage was stumped. He had no idea how to respond. Feeling flustered, Markage decided to defuse the tension by cracking a joke. He answered, well, summer is coming. Probably women don't like to eat pizza as much. Right away, he knew that that was not the correct response. When the mother and daughter received their pizza, they immediately asked for the check. Markage handed it to them. Having been a waiter at this pizzeria for nine years, Markage knew how to handle all different types of customers, but he had no idea what was coming. The next time Markage looked at their table, the mother and daughter were gone. Before cleaning the table, Markage looked at the check. He saw that neither of the customers left a tip. Even worse, one of the women left him a note. It said, women eat pizza, and by the way, have you heard that women don't leave tips? Markage felt terrible, as much of his livelihood depended on tips. But he tucked his emotions away and cleaned the table. While Markage was cleaning off the table, he noticed a discarded envelope. Clearly, the customers had left something behind. Markage was about to throw it away when he decided to double-check what it was. When he pulled back the envelope flap, he saw the logo Citibank. Clearly, the customers had left a check on the table. It definitely wasn't a tip, as the note pointed out. They forgot it while leaving the restaurant in a hurry. Even amidst his busy Saturday, Markage spared a moment to wonder who would wave a check around and not spare a tip for the waiter. Considering how rude the ladies acted towards him, he could have understandably kept the check. Markage now faced a moral dilemma. Return the money to the ungrateful customers, or keep it as his overdue tip? Many people would have done the latter with little hesitation. But Markage was not a selfish person. Although Markage could have understandably kept the check, he didn't. He immediately ran out into the street to find the customers and return it. Unfortunately, the two women were nowhere to be found. Markage did not know their names or any way to contact them. Although it could have been seen as a breach of privacy, Markage decided to open the envelope. Checks always include the name of the owner, which might have helped him contact the two ladies. When he opened it, he was shocked. The check was for $424,000. Not only did customers leave money behind, but they lost half a million dollars. Markage was suddenly in a sensitive and dangerous situation. Who would enter a pizzeria with this much money? Feeling blindsided, Markage reached out to his boss, Patsy's current owner Frank Brigia. When he saw it, the 63-year-old owner only said, Oh my. The two shocked men debated over what to do about it. Normally, we just put things left behind in the lost and found box in the back, Markage later said. But I wasn't going to do that with almost half a million dollars. Markage and Brigia decided to research the woman's name, Karen Van Acker, which was written on the check. 
Breja asked his son, 30-year-old Adem Breja, to Google the name on the chat. Surely, if she was a wealthy person, she'd be easy to find. Unfortunately, it wasn't that easy. Unfortunately, Karen Van Acker was not as wealthy as Breja thought. The 79-year-old mother was a retired social worker. During her retirement, Van Acker spent most of her time volunteering with charities to aid underprivileged women and children. Before Van Acker went to Patsy's, they had spent much of the day hunting for a new condo. Van Acker had just sold her old place and planned to use the $424,000 check as the down payment and more on her new home. Besides her retirement money, Van Acker only had that $424,000. In essence, it was her entire life savings. If Van Acker did not have the check or the money, she would become homeless. Van Acker and her daughter had spent that Saturday house hunting budgeting, and calling her real estate broker. By the time they got to Patsy's, they felt fairly worn out. Hence, she and her daughter reacted negatively to Markid's joke about the walls. Well, my daughter's kind of feisty, and she didn't like that, Van Acker said, so we didn't tip him. The two ladies had no idea that it could come back to bit them until Van Acker realized she had lost the check. Van Acker did not notice the check was missing until the next day. When she unzipped the inner compartment of her purse, she realized that her check had disappeared. Even then, she did not immediately panic. I figured, it's a check. I'll just go to the bank and ask them to stop it. At Citibank, Van Acker received terrible news. The banker said that, because it was a cashier's check, they could not cancel it. They had to wait at least three months to discontinue the check, and that was only if someone else didn't cash it. This is when Van Acker started to panic. She had earned much of the money by selling her home, and she couldn't stay with family forever. Without that check, she might have become homeless. Feeling antsy, Van Acker ran up the street to a cafe where she and her daughter had coffee. The cafe did not have the check. Dejected, Van Acker called her real estate broker, who did not pick up the phone, so she left a message. Van Acker then called her daughter, who also could not find the check. She checked her purse, her house, and even her trash can. Nothing. Van Acker felt like she was rapidly running out of options. Van Acker eventually checked Patsy's, but instead of walking into the restaurant, she called them. Unbeknownst to her, she had called the wrong Patsy's. When the incorrect Patsy's said they didn't have the check, Van Acker felt lost. While Van Acker struggled to find her life savings, Markage and Breja still worked on returning the check. Since they couldn't find the owner, they decided to enlist some help. They called New York's hometown newspaper for aid. Within minutes, the newspaper employees tracked down Karen Van Acker. They called her from Patsy's asking if she had lost something of great value. She felt so shocked and relieved that she could barely answer. I can't believe it. I'm so relieved. You have no idea. A breathless Van Acker answered on the phone. I'm jumping in a cab. I'll be there right away. Van Acker immediately hopped in a cab went to Patsy's Pizzeria to the correct restaurant this time. When Van Acker walked through Patsy's front door, she immediately saw Markage with her check. Markage harbored no ill will and returned her check without any fuss. He later said that he was happy she found it. Van Acker was relieved that Markage decided to return the check, claiming that he was an amazing young man. She and her daughter did not expect to encounter the waiter again. Needless to say, they changed their minds about him with this act of selflessness, along with returning Van Acker's check and giving her a free pizza. Owner Frank Breja had another surprise for her. He wanted to put her on Patsy's wall. We're going to take a picture of your day with you, and I'm going to put that on the wall too, the pizza entrepreneur told her. So there will be one more woman on the wall. Van Acker felt honored. She would join generations of Patsy's regulars and iconic people on that wall. As soon as Van Acker walked through the door, she apologized to Breja for not tipping Macridge. She claimed that her passive-aggressive note wasn't her best moment. In return, she tried to give Macridge his overdue tip money. Surprisingly, Macridge declined the money. He thought that reuniting her with her life savings was enough of a gift, not only for him, but the entirety of Patsy's staff. His generosity will be remembered. Although Markage would not accept the extra tip, Van Acker planned to give him a gift certificate to buy education supplies. 
She knew how much school costs because of her daughter's university fees, and she was thankful for Market's help.